Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the called meeting of the Ad Hoc Bylaws Committee of the Del Mar College District Board of Regents, um, meeting today at 4 o'clock on July 29th. Uh, I will call the meeting to order and do a roll call. Regent Hutchinson? Here. Dr. Turner? Here. And I am okay. Libby Averett, and all members of the committee are present. Um, let us have a moment of silence, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. The pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please join me in reading the Del Mar College vision statement. Del Mar College will be the premier choice for life-changing educational opportunities provided by responsive, innovative faculty and staff who empower students to improve local and global communities. Del Mar College is streaming live audio and video from the official ad hoc bylaws committee meeting on the college's website in real time, with the exception of portions of the meeting considered as closed session by statute. Uh, we do allow for public comments, but I understand that there are no public comments that have been submitted today, so we will carry on with our uh, business on our agenda. First up is the review and approval of our minutes from our last meeting, which was just last week on July 22nd of 2021. If you all have had a chance to review those minutes, I will entertain a motion to approve. I so move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. Okay. We are in the home stretch of our work uh, with many thanks to our council, Mr. Rivera. Um, and today's task is to go through the latest draft of the bylaws one more time for a little bit of cleanup and then also to review the new personal disclosure statement and our statement of ethical conduct that we are proposing that we sign um, every year. So let's start by going ahead and just jumping into the bylaws, Mr. Rivera, if that's okay with you. Okay. Absolutely. Um, committee members, uh, based on your uh, input and uh, suggestions that last week, uh, gone back through and made changes to the bylaw draft um, with the changes uh, highlighted for you for ease of reference. So hopefully you were able to follow that. Um, and you'll see there was nothing on page one. And to clarify, what's highlighted is just the most recent changes. Correct. And when we present to the board on August 10th, uh, what will be highlighted is all of the changes. Right, we'll right. work out whatever you all, whatever region ever you think is best in, in the way of presentation, whether it's highlighted or redlined or both, you know, but we'll, we, it will be clear, they'll have a copy of the original draft or is, is, is it the current version of, the, of your bylaws and then all the proposed changes at once. So right. what's in yellow just represents your latest the committee's latest yes. proposal. Um, before we move to page two, I know there was no yellow on page one. Did anybody catch anything on page one? <laughs> okay, no, I did not. Okay, let's let's go to page two. Page two there under subpart nine, you see we've included specific reference to the education code that requires you to attend at least half of your meetings in order to remain on the board. Uh, quick question, Ms. Rivera, about that paragraph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is um, as outlined by statute, correct? correct? The during a calendar year is in the statute, and we're not at liberty to change that. That's right. Okay. <laughs> that, that. Yeah, I didn't like the, for which the member is excused by majority vote of the board. So that means they're excused, their absence is excused, and everyone's going to be voting on everybody's absences. <laughs> I wouldn't think it has to be no. done at every yeah. meeting. It's just right. after there have been a couple, we could say, Let's I, I move to excuse these or not, is what I would think. Is that good? 
I oh. think if it becomes an issue, I think that if it becomes an issue, then you'll, you'll, you'll be addressing it before you're considering whether or not there's an absent slip or, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. From home, explaining why you're absent, so. Mm -hmm. But that's, yep. the, you're right, Regent Avert, that's verbatim the language from the okay. education. Okay. I like that. Letter B, you've added. Look, I, can I I'm just sorry. ask about that? I, I got a, I'm just gonna make an overall comment. I got a little bit confused about whether Roman numeral one just applies to the board as a whole or also to board members' responsibilities. Um, and if it's not, where else would we put it? I, get, I just got a little confused about. For which one? Oh. Well, this is more overall. For it, everyone. It is, is Roman numeral one just the, what the board does yeah. or what individual members? And I'll give you, I'll jump ahead a little mm -hmm. bit. For example, is it? F, talking about if citizens bring a complaint. I mean, that's, it's not really the board. Where we, are we addressing the citizens? I'm just uh, not being very clear, but. No. Um, or, is um, it, or is it whether they're collective oh, or individual? Maybe that needs to go in a different spot. But I don't know where that other spot would be, so. If citizens bring concerns and complaints to end of the board and the board members have I mean, we've got regent misconduct. I don't know if absences are misconduct. Um. There, there are a number, it appears, of items. That address the board and then there. I think, I think the, the key is shall proceed according to appropriate board policy. So whatever whatever the policy is, we're going to follow it concerning citizen complaints. You know, so, right? I mean, that, that's, Regent Hudson, that's the objective, right? Let me try. Are you, are you saying that the items under uh, Roman 1A, uh, that those enumerated items refer to the board? That, it's really a yes. question. Yeah. It, is it intended to just be limited to the board? Plural, um, the royal board, or is it board members? And if it's not board members, where would we put those? I think just as another item, as another letter item. Okay. Separate. What um, is another letter item? Uh, number nine? Number nine. Because number nine is the only one that pertains to individual board members. Well, okay. I'll give you another example. Uh, under I, Roman number one. Paragraph I, we talk about regents complying with policies about expenditures. Mm -hmm. And maybe we just leave it all in there together. <laughs> um, I don't want to make it difficult if it doesn't matter, but if, there's a, if, if it does matter. Oh. I, I don't know if it matters as long as with number nine, we perhaps make it its own letter and specify that we're talking about an individual board responsibility. Board member, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so make that B. So kind yeah. of right. right. Okay. Right. And make it a sentence. Um, yes. Yeah, we can do that. I can do that. Because, okay. Because that's, that's fine. But otherwise, let's, yes. let's just assume we're putting boards gotcha. and regions all under this paragraph. Yes. Okay, that'll help my Yeah, that brain. makes sense. Yeah. Because I think substantively, substantively, they are all duties and responsibilities, whether collectively or individually. Or individually. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm okay. with you. Great. So Thank number you. Number nine will be made into B, and then we'll. Everything will follow. Right. Okay. On the old letter B, mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe you've added that phrase that's in yellow. Right. Right? As, as we, as we yes. discussed, okay. which is great. There needs to be an S be, uh, on the meetings. Okay. And functions only when yeah. it is convened and, proper, and properly well, noticed a. meetings. I don't yeah. know. It sounded weird either, when I read it. Okay. Right. Either a meeting or meetings, plural. Yeah, one or the other, I think. And I think yes. under letter G, where it says C below section 15, I think we moved. We moved if, you're, if you're referring to board training, it's now section 8. Good afternoon, Dr. Escamilla. <laughs> Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon everybody. Everybody. 
Okay, uh, moving on to page three. Uh, most of this is in letter because uh, Mr. Rivera changed at our uh, recommendation to basically start everyone with an active verb so that it would just be consistent. Now, in A, though, some of it was deleted from the old letter A, I believe. I have a notation here that something... I think we kind of, I think that's broken up between attending the meetings and devoting time, right. which is right. B. Oh, okay. I try to integrate. Well, the part that was deleted, though, is in a, in a, insofar as possible and become well informed concerning issues to be considered at those meetings. That was the part that was deleted. So I just didn't know if there was. I tried to work that into B. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just make Thank it a little you. more concise with the divide. Devote time, thought, and study. Okay. That was, that's all that I had. I didn't have anything on this page. Mm -mm. Okay. So on page four, my, and I don't recall if we talked about this or not. My only question is on letter P, which I know is not in yellow, <laughs> is why we're specifically mentioning solely sexual harassment as opposed to other types of um, harassment, bullying, um, discrimination, I'm not saying not to mention sexual harassment, but it makes, in my mind when I read this, I'm thinking, oh, we're just, we're just concerned about sexual harassment. Good point. That's a good point. Why even, even if we took it to other harassments, <laughs> why, why are we, I mean, all, all of our policies should be effective. I don't know, we haven't discussed it. This, yeah. is, this is probably, at this point, antiquated. Right. At the time that this, I mean, but you raise a good point. We could, I could, flesh that out to include all forms of discrimination. Right, that's exactly what I'm Okay. Okay, I can what I'm getting at. On that and I'm sure come up with something. Okay. Good catch. Yes, thank you Tammy. Ms. McDonald. You yeah. might want to leave and, and change it to sexual misconduct because you as a board member if you do have knowledge of something based on our new policies for sexual misconduct because of Title IX changes mm -hmm. and then our VAWA policy then you are required to report it. You're a person who's in one of those categories okay. that you're mandatory. You have to report it. Okay. Yeah, but that, uh, uh, and that, 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 that is a policy, but I don't know if we wanted to spell that out separately like we had to do with employees. So, Ms. We, McDonald, is, yeah. is there any other kind of misconduct that we, um, by law, are mandatory reporters? No. By so law. if that's the case, I'm okay with Ms. McDonald's suggestion and changing it to sexual misconduct or harassment, but I would like us to add perhaps another letter that covers all forms of discrimination. Understood. If y'all are comfortable mm -hmm. with that. Because mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying, Ms. McDonald, that that, because I didn't know we were mandatory reporters. I'm sure somebody told me, <laughs> and I just <laughs> forgot. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. So we'll flesh it out into a, a, a bigger statement about What do you want to prohibit? Yes. Yeah, gotcha. Anything else on page four? Okay, page five. Nope. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I only had the S. That was it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Page six. Page seven, that one paragraph, um, I'd like to offer a slight change because some regents may not have former private sector employees. So instead of saying with regard to their former private sector employers, I wonder if we say, um, any or 
or if applicable someplace in there. What paragraph are you on? Four, the one that's highlighted. Oh. Regent shall avoid a conflict of interest and the appearance of such conflict with regard to their former private sector employers. Maybe you just put if, former employers. You don't have. Do we need private sector in there? Yes. I mean, that's yes. The we the point to, is the relationship with a with the private sector company. Mm -hmm. My point is not everybody will have such a relationship. Does it help to take out there? That's what I was thinking. Just take out there. Sure. Okay. Yes. Clients room for a period of one year. And you could take such out mm -hmm. on the next to the last paragraph uh, line. Substantial benefit uh -huh. to former employers, clients, or close business. And if they don't have any one of those, then they right. don't have to worry about it. Right. Okay. I'm sure we'll discuss that at the board meeting at <laughs> some length. <laughs> okay. Pages eight. I'm fine with the word B. <laughs> <laughs> you like verbs. Nothing on page nine. Page 10, thank you for um, getting rid of the duplication there. Page 11, you've cleaned that up. Mm -hmm. And why did we take out E? So E, I, I'll ask Ms. McDonald to look at that as well. I, it just seemed inconsistent with, I mean, the notices are supposed to be in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act. And so I, I'd never caught that, and unless I'm missing something, I mean, it was when I was looking at the emergency meetings and how that gets called. It also does seem a little antiquated with this all this plainly addressed and right. sealed envelope. I mean, you just have to get notice, right? I mean, it well, you basically covered all with F. Right. You just mm -hmm. say meeting notices and agendas will be posted in accordance with the Texas Open yep. Meetings Act. Yep. That way, we're not having to change it all the time. Yeah. And and so I I don't know where the forty eight hours came from. You know, at least forty eight hours. I mean, it's. You know, in the telephone notice of an emergency <laughs> meeting, four hour. I mean, it's actually one hour now. It's an emergency meeting, so right. I thought it would, it was clean up. Yep, that's okay. fine. Good, good, really good. Okay, page twelve. Yep. <coughs> Specified between just general public comment, <clears throat> excuse me, and public comment related to a specific item. And I think the on page 13, the addition of number 10 was mm -hmm. good. Yep. And then 14 and 15, nothing in yellow there, and I didn't catch anything mm -hmm. else there. No, and thank you for rearranging some of these items. I was going to ask think, my yeah. final think question. Is, is the order okay? Yeah. I think it makes a lot more it, sense. It does. <laughs> it makes all, a lot of sense. And it's right areas. Thank you. A lot of sense. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Rivera, any, this is not your last chance forever, but any uh, last questions for us about this? No, I would ask you to read it again one more time. I mean, you have time between now and the August 11th board meeting. Ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. I do know that uh, the board chair has requested uh, that these be presented in draft form to the entire board as soon as possible. As soon as ahead possible. Ahead of the board packet so that they have an opportunity to begin digesting it. But certainly in the next week, I would think, if any of you have additional thoughts, when you set it down and come back, and I'll do the same. Um, if you, I'm not saying you need to necessarily meet. Again, you've got a little bit of flexibility given that you're a committee. So, you know, if one of you wanted to call me or get on the phone, we could do that. Um, if, it, if the changes are too significant or too, you know, I th something I think you need I'm to I'm okay with the changes and then bring it before the board because yeah. we're going to have to come back anyways mm -hmm. and adjust. Yeah, I don't, so. I don't anticipate anything so major that we need to convene again prior to the board meeting. However, I will put you on the spot a little bit and ask you, Mr. Rivera, when you think you can have that summary document prepared and the last 
draft prepared in the form that we'd like it to go to the board that you can share with us? Um, and the board packets typically go up how far in advance of November on the seventh, right? As early as Thursday. Right. Six. That would be the sixth. The fifth. <laughs> right. I think Tuesday fifth at the at the fifth latest. Fifth is Thursday. But I'll shoot for Monday. Please shoot for yeah. Monday because so then look at it we can look at it immediately. Okay. And if we can then get it to the board Tuesday, okay. I would. Okay. I would the other regents by Tuesday. That would be great. Give them a full week to look at this before the board meeting. Yeah, because there's only a couple things, that's it. Right, so, so, but, 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 but he's got to write up a summary. Right, write up yeah, a summary. Yeah, I understand that the summary's going at the same time to the board, okay. Yes, because I think they need a bit of a blueprint. Uh, yeah, I agree. I yeah, because they're gonna go, wow. And it'll be a true summary, it won't be a, I mean, just what you have done as a committee and then some of the highlights and the changes that they can get into it, and, but that's why we need to get it to them as soon as possible. The, the only thing is the mechanical, we're gonna actually sit down and take Right. Original or, or current draft and then do mm -hmm. the compare. Yeah. And you're going to send them the original, right? Yes. And then they can turn them out or well, It'll actually be do. the original with the red line markup on right. it. Yeah, it should just be one set, but it'll but you'll be able to see what see. was there. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think that's easier. Okay. okay. I mean, it's going to be a little complicated just because we've moved some things around. So. Yep. It will be. Right. But we'll get that, and then um, um, I, I, again, I mean, a lot of detail work, and I want to thank Ms. McDonald and, and uh, Ms. Sanchez, our executive legal assistant. They've been very helpful in getting each draft to the next step for you right. guys. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's look at the new draft of the personal disclosure statement. And Thank you for um, making more sense of Roman numeral <laughs> one for us. I just simplified it and yes. took out all the qualifying language yes, about thank you. Uh, retainer engagement. And I, I don't know if that meets the spirit or the intent of what you all were asking for, but. I, I think it does. My, my only question here was we left in the word voluntarily file in oh. the opening paragraph. Oh. I'm sorry, that, that should be taken mm -hmm. out. That's yeah. okay. Nobody does it. You can't require somebody. You can't require somebody to do something voluntary. <laughs> That's what it says. Um, yeah. I got halfway there. So it requires each reason. And you know, we may get some. Well, we will get questions, but we may get some questions about why. You know, why do we need to disclose even volunteer activities? I would ask why not, and that even even in our bylaws, it, it does make reference to nonprofit organizations or other relationships that you may have. So, mm -hmm. and I, I don't have a problem with it. I don't yeah. Know. Okay. I can't think why not. <laughs> okay. Any comments about the personal disclosure like statement? Mm -hmm. Good. The intent, and so that you all know, you, we've talked about this before, the intent is really to try to keep each of you uh, sensitive to the issue of conflicts. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not so much to get anybody in a gotcha. No. Or mm -hmm. to, to be overly burdensome, but just to, to keep you uh, mindful. In the mindset, mindful yeah. of things that you're involved in that may present even appearances of impropriety. And so that's all. I think it's very helpful to have that disclosed in advance so it doesn't be, mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you all know information about this is leading to involvement of somebody that we're involved with, and you can say from the outset, you may, you may or should um, abstain from this discussion. Well, and I have to say, I was relatively naive um, coming into the position, and um, after I became a regent, had one or two individuals reach out to me that I didn't even put two and two together 
<laughs> that their sudden interest in me <laughs> was because I was a Del Mar regent as opposed to what I may do professionally. And so um, having this and having some discussion about it, I think might have, um, it was halfway through a conversation with somebody where we weren't talking about Del Mar, but I thought, oh, this is why he's suddenly so nice to me. Not, <laughs> not, <laughs> you know, and, and um, yeah, and if I'd had to do this originally, I might have given, I might have snapped a little bit faster. <laughs> I mean, the filing is, you know, that's why I brought you the, I don't know, 38 page, whatever mm -hmm. it is, personal financial statement that state officers actually have to file. You know, much. So you're not. You're not doing. Any, you're not doing something strange. You're not. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's not out of. It's not unconventional to require. Even, it. It's just you don't have to. Right. right. Now, so. And even all these appointees have to fill. I mean, okay. I always had to fill that out every every May. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. And last but certainly not least was just the revision of our um, statement of ethical conduct where we basically refer back to everything we just talked about um, instead of restating a separate code of ethics here, which was a little disjointed. And, um, and I have had something just to add where it says, I am mindful of the public trust invested in the office to which I've been elected or appointed. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank hereby you. commit yep. to, yeah. Thank you. Not all of yeah, us have, were have elected. The board now less and less. Right. Appointed. And then, yeah. as much as I agree with your quote, <laughs> in the, in the um, effort to make sure we are truly nonpartisan, I think I would take it off. Okay. I, I, I mentioned to Regent Averett uh, <laughs> that I was having a little bit of personal fun. I wanted you all to see that. And that it, it, it's actually a quote, I've mentioned to this to you before, you that have. the Office of General Counsel of the University of Texas system has on its website. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't even an original thought. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an Augie thing. But uh, I, I thought it was a nice little tribute to one of my political heroes. But I. I I, and it's, I told you, you might want to take it. I know, and it's not a partisan quote by any means, oh, right. um, but I, I don't want to go out of my way to poke anybody in the eye. Um, I'm also not a, I appreciate that you use this quote in your training of us. Uh, I've seen it there. I don't even that's mind okay. if it's on the website, frankly, but um, that's, that's just my personal feeling. That's why I mentioned it. <laughs> And if I can ask, is it, is sure. it enough that we affirm that we've reviewed the bylaws? I'm, I'm sort of going back mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, we've committed to integrity, good faith, and all those. Mm -hmm. Are we reviewing and committing to abide by, or, or is that part of our, that's part of our duties? Don't know. You know, more questions, anything else here? Are you... I don't, I'm I don't not want, sure I understand. Well, it, this used to be before when we listed it all out was a commitment. I won't to do, do this. All I will these do things. this. I won't do that. The, the starting paragraph says we're committing to standards. Does, does that in you, and I, I'm hearing kind of that it does, does that mean to you all that you are committing to follow these bylaws? I, I like, I understand where you're going, and I like maybe at the end of number one adding and will abide by these or some something to that. Or even the, you know, reviewed and commit to abide by the laws. Yes. How about that? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, and, and again, I don't want to be redundant if that's already in the opening paragraph, no, but it yeah. seems no, like I think that's yeah. good. Commit. I don't want anybody to come up and say, I read them. I read them. Yeah. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Susan yeah. was thinking. Yeah. And commit to abide by. Yes. How about that? And commit to abide by. Two cents. Okay. Good. I was thinking of we could add it in compliance with my oath in the law, our board bylaws, and the highest ethical standards. But either way, mm. another way to get to. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. I mean, that, that, you know, that's I, I think I like that better. I think that gets all of our, our commitment is to our oath, our bylaws, state law. 
and then this is just sort of then that makes the affirmation a little more housekeeping mm -hmm. I, I, I know what i'm reviewing i've completed this mm -hmm. what do you think that's yeah, fine I, okay Kay. go for it Augie. good thought thank you Dr. Escamilla, do you have any thoughts or comments for us? Comments only, just um, congratulations up to this point. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a very detailed, um, <laughs> involved uh, process that when you compare um, this stack of data with, with or a stack of information with what we've had prior, it, it is light, <laughs> light years uh, <coughs> ahead. And I congratulate and commend um, the board, you all leading uh, the board toward this end. Thank you. We couldn't have done it without Mr. Rivera and Ms. Sanchez and Ms. McDonald. We really appreciate the staff help on this. Uh, yes, ma'am, Ms. McDonald. Yeah. Just, a, uh, just from personally serving on, on other boards and, and things, going back to the personal disclosure statement. Yes, ma'am. I think it's always good because the boards I've served on it says you have to file it once a year but by a certain month or the end of a month because that way you don't have to wonder when, when? and what time of year and also who do you file it to who do you yes. submit it to on both documents I would put who are you supposed to give it to once you sign it thank you or once you turn something in it's just it's just from experience it's just a suggestion no that's a good point thank you well we have our ethics meeting in january right you do the training in january uh, february 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 mm -hmm. so i think it should be probably filled out prior mm -hmm. to that i don't know or maybe after because we will have then reviewed them and, and we'll, we'll yeah. be familiar with them however you're going to have to couch the language a little bit for somebody who may join us mm -hmm. You know, because certain, I think it should be immediately upon taking office. Oh, they have to, uh, don't we sign a different oath? We have an oath, but it's not this. Not this. And what, if, what if we did 30 days after election? Or 30 days after? Not, you don't want to do it by election day, but whatever. Mm. The, well, do you want the training the first, office. though? Taking the oath. Um, 30 days after that. But then we have to do it, but we're doing it every year. So somebody that's elected one year would do it the next year, even though it's not just 30 days after. So do you want to do it after you do the training? 30 days after training, so where we're all doing no, it at that may the be same time? That could be a long time. Yeah. Okay, that, let me draw. Oh, your yes, gotcha. Audience. Let me draw your attention to page five. Um, letter X. Yes, yeah, so the bylaws. The third paragraph down. So you all had asked. I mean, we wanted to oh. it, to formalize the the conducting of an annual ethics update mm -hmm. that will specifically include a review of the bylaws and statement of conduct and ethics. Upon completion, each regent will prepare and file a personal disclosure statement and commitment to ethical conduct. Okay, that's great. However. Right, I'm appointed. I'm appointed in March. So you were, and I was. So let can we just add something there? Um, regents, if appointed, shall undergo the same ethics training and sign the same documents at the time within. But so <laughs> I ha I'm not sure why the personal disclosure statement can't be signed immediately upon taking office. You, you don't have to be trained on anything to disclose who your employers are and what committees are, you may okay. serve on. So do we need to put, put this into, well it's already in the bylaws, but. But not the time, but I like putting yeah. the timing when it needs to be filed here, not on the disclosure statement. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, what I mean, I think, sorry. I, I think 
doing the personal disclosure and the commitment to ethical conduct could be important enough to make them other paragraphs. <laughs> In other words, X is conduct the ethics okay. period, just a thought. Y is uh, file a personal disclosure statement within 32, 30 days, 30 days of taking of office. Of taking That's, office. Good, yeah. That's fine. And, and, but we've got to do it again. And then annually. Yeah. And then we could make it even another paragraph also, sign a commitment to ethical conduct within 30 days or, I, I don't know about the timing. I, I don't care so much about when these are done. Mm. Well, but they, they seem to be three different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Training, disclosure statement, and commitment to ethical conduct. Well, I know I just didn't sign anything until after we had our ethics training. Well, I understand not signing yeah. the statement of ethical conduct until after you've done the ethics training. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So are you okay with somebody being appointed in March, not signing that until after the training? Okay. No. Okay. No. Um, because somewhere in here... We don't specify when all that training has to happen, right? Don't we just say right. as soon as possible or something like that? Right. Upon taking office. Now, we meet with you when we do our mm -hmm. onboarding. Could you do a mini and then have them sign it on the part of the onboarding? I think that's what I'm hearing is that you all would, if somebody's appointed midterm or eight months mm -hmm. away from February. Okay, on page nine, huh? under board member training, it currently says, the fourth paragraph says, within 90 days of taking the oath of office, a regent shall complete a course of training on open meetings and open records. Mm -hmm. There's no reason we couldn't add. And sign. Well, that we couldn't add the ethics training there and sign the statement of ethical conduct. Mm -hmm. So that way, if I'm appointed in December, I'll just do my ethical conduct training with everybody else in February. But mm -hmm. if I'm appointed in March, Augie gets to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. I can unpack that. That's clear. You got the gist. Okay. okay. Good point, Ms. McDonald. Thank you. Did you see anything else, Ms. McDonald? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Okay. Mr. Rivera, what else? While well, you've still got us. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is, this is plenty. It's good work and uh, ready to help you all present it to the full board. Absolutely. And, and um, thank you, Regents Hutchinson and, and Turner. Um, I, I think we've been very productive. I appreciate y'all's attention and, and hard work. <clears throat> hard work. The work's not done, as you heard at our workshop. Um, we will present this to the board. Um, they may or may not on that day take action. Uh, we may, we may not. Um, but once we do take action and adopt some new bylaws, then we will reconvene mm -hmm. at least a few times to talk more specifically about corresponding policies. Okay. Dr. Escamilla, anything else? No, ma'am. Good work. Good work. Um, yes, Dr. Turner. We'll need to co continue meetings at 4.30, though. Yeah, so that's fine. Is that right? Yeah, not sure when our next meeting will be at this point. We'll, we'll wait until that. after the August 10th board meeting and I then decide. I will make it 4 o'clock. That's fine. Okay. We can accommodate. Go back okay. to 4.30. Thank you very much. We stand adjourned at 4.39.